Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com. Uh, nightly uh, wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Before we get started, guys, if you can do me uh, a big favor, take a second. Uh, if you like what we're doing, if you like the content, if you watch us uh, every single day, all I ask is simply just click a like. Take a second, uh, click a like, show support, and then we'll try to uh, continue to provide you uh, daily value. So if, if you've been watching this broadcast uh, for the last three weeks, just in the last three weeks, uh, you kind of know the formula by now. Uh, you know, you know. Tell me if you've heard this one before. Above the fifty-day moving average is bullish. Below the fifty-day moving average is bearish. You don't buy stocks above. You don't buy stocks into gap ups below the fifty-day moving average because what's going to happen? It's going to go into daily supply. You're going to get stuffed, and they're going to roll over. It's been literally the same script. Uh, pretty much, right? Pretty much. For the exception of the really aggressive gap down days, it's been pretty much the same script ever since we lost uh, the 50-day moving average on July the 24th. Stocks are gapping up. They get rejected into supply. If they lose the previous day's channel, they go lower. That's literally been the same thing. But yet, you, start, you still see people chasing pre-market gappers chasing uh at the open and it doesn't make any sense this is not the market that you can get away with that that we saw a month ago two months ago right when everything was all good and the world was going to be great and stocks were never going to go down again at least that's what i kept on hearing um and the problem is you know there is no you know there's no rhyme or reason why a trader or an investor or anything in that matter continues to do the same thing again it's like getting punched in the face one day two day three day four day. Eventually, doc, man, right? Doc, move your head to the left, to the right. It's the same thing over and over again. Guys, it, the game script doesn't change. The market is not trying to trick you. The market is not trying to, uh, you know, to put you in a situation that you have to guess. It's telling you technically what's happening. And when you woke up this morning, uh, again, futures were gapping up again. Again, they were gapping up. And, you know, because of Japan, and then slowly but surely, just like we saw yesterday, guess what? It got faded again. The only difference between today's session and yesterday's session was, yes, stocks definitely got rejected into supply. And I'll give you guys a um, bunch of examples here in, in a second. But the difference is a lot of those names lost the previous day's channel and started getting very, very aggressive. And when you look at the fine numbers today, uh, Dow down another 234 points, S&P down into the 40, uh, and the NASDAQ gave back 1% or 171 points. So you can see here, right? Two days ago, we gapped into supply. What happened? We got rejected. Today, we gapped into the five-day supply. Guess what? We got rejected. Look at every single individual stock, guys. Again, sometimes the easiest way to learn is visually, okay? Look at Apple. So they go one by one. Look at Apple, right? Got rejected today back into the 50-day moving average, okay? 50-day moving average was in the 1360s. Guess what happened? It got rejected, sold off $4. Look at the NVIDIA, right? Look what happened to NVIDIA. NVIDIA gapped up into this 10-day supply. We had a great, great rejection there at the open. At the 10-day supply uh, in the 10, uh, 10880s, uh, 10860s, Look at the stock. This is the lowest close in this whole formation. The stock is getting absolutely mass massacred here. Okay. Kill. Just absolutely kill. Look what happened to Tesla. It got rejected, right? Where did it get rejected? Right into supply. When these stocks are gapping into supply. This is three days in a row that Tesla got rejected off the same area. But yet people are still pushing into supply thinking the stock is going to go higher. Stocks need to get above supply. They need to test supply and the next day to get back above supply. So you, you're having a lot of names over and over and over again. And the second half of the thesis is when they start losing the previous day's lows, it starts to accelerate, right? Uh, yesterday, you had SMCI come out with earnings, uh, missed the EPS. You know, look what they did to this thing. I mean, I mean, this is this is pretty bad, right? This is pretty bad. Stock is down 
124 points today. Uh, semiconductors, for whatever reason, were actually okay at the open, I guess. Okay. And then you have this massive turnaround. Remember we talked about AMD last night, right? AMD, again, look where AMD got rejected. Again, stocks don't just stop in thin air. They are getting rejected off supplies. You can see here, look how many times, you know, AMD's got rejected off this green line. This green line represents the 10-day supply. Rejected once, got rejected twice. Three days in a row of lower highs, and yet people are still buying stocks into supply and then it lost the previous day's range. And now this is the lowest close in this whole formation. NVIDIA, right? Impossible. It'll never go under 100. Impossible. Again, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. But the idea that stocks can't do something because you think they'll never do something is idiotic. This is now the lowest close in this whole formation. They do come out with earnings in about two weeks. Again, your guess is as good as mine what's going to happen in two weeks. Maybe the stock's at 120. Maybe the stock's at 70. Who the hell knows? But again, we're taking it day by day, uh, trade by trade. And you can see, not only did it get rejected off the 10-day moving average, it lost the previous day's low, which is $100.55. And now this is the lowest close of the whole formation. And the stock is trading right above 98 uh, after hours. Is it possible this thing gets down to 97, 95 tomorrow? Anything's possible, right? Anything's possible. But the one clue we had today, the one, one clue we had today that things were about to get uh, very, very aggressive as stocks were uh, losing uh, losing the previous day's range was Meta. If you guys remember, yesterday we talked about Meta as being one of the nicer, cleaner charts. We had a great pivot today. Okay, For all you guys who took Meta today, great job. Uh, it took out this 503 level, traded up to 510. And then look what happened, right? And then look what happened. And just out of nowhere, the stock decided to, for whatever reason, come in about 25 points. And this was the strongest stock coming out with the biggest earnings. So the narrative of this market has not changed. The game script has not changed. The market, again, the market's job is not to trick you. It's not. I promise you, I give you my word, there's nobody there uh, holding, you know, holding the cards. There's nobody there uh, behind the curtain, you know, doing something crazy. The, the market's job is to create an orderly environment, bare, bull, or indifferent, it's there to facilitate buy and sell orders. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And the market is giving you the game script via technical analysis. That's all it is. That's all it's doing. Depending on your process, you're either embracing what the market is telling you or you're fighting, right? You're fighting every single day. Today's the low. Today's the low. Today's the low. Today's the low. Eventually, it will be the low, right? One day it's going to rain. One day it's going to rain. One day it's going to rain. You'll be sitting in the desert for four four months. One day it's going to rain. One day you, you know. One day you get a drop out of the air. You start having a parade. Look, the market is there for you to make adult decisions. Okay, make adult decisions based on what the data the market is giving you. Right now, the market is super duper heavy. Uh, a lot of investors are underwater, especially in the last three weeks. Uh, and this is really, it turned out to be a trader's market. The script is there. The players are there. You just have to embrace it. And this is why we talk about there's a major, major difference between uh, somebody who's a phenomenal uh, bull market uh, investor every single day. Everything, you know, everything is great. But when the tide turns and the, and the wind, you know, goes back into a different direction, well, again, there's a big difference between a trader and an investor. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you're an investor, it's not a shot at investors. If you're an investor, that's fantastic. But if you are a trader, your job is to capitalize on all markets, whether they're good, uh, bad, or indifferent. So uh, going into tomorrow, guys, uh, watch these levels here on the queues. It stopped here right at yesterday's channel. Uh, watch this level here, this 434 level. If the queues lose 434, we're going to go down to about roughly 430. Uh, if you look at the IWM, how the mighty have fallen, this was the biggest, biggest run-up. Uh, that we saw in the last two months. Big move down. Uh, watch the IWM. Uh, 201 is the line in the sand. That's the lows of the last two candles. Uh, IWM loses 201. We should go down to like 99, ultimately 97.50s. Uh, if you look at the SPYs, again, same thing as the Qs. They held the bottom channel here. Uh, they're sitting right above, uh, they're sitting right above uh, the 150 day uh, SMA. Uh, watch, uh, you know, watch uh, the spies. If the spies start losing uh, five seventeen eighties. That's where the line in the sand is. They start losing five seventeen eighties. Yeah, we're gonna go lower. So uh, and Dow, I guess if it makes any, you know, if anybody cares, the Dow needs to lose 
Uh, the Diamonds need to lose like uh, 385 uh, for the next leg down. So look, you have, you have a lot of asset classes underwater. Uh, Bitcoin, I think, was down another, what was Bitcoin down today? Bitcoin down another, what, 3% today? Uh, Europe, you know, Europe, you know, in Europe, not a pretty situation. Nikkei uh, had a nice little spike before it sold off. It was only up about 1%. So the market's in trouble. I mean, look, the market is in trouble. Again, I'm not really breaking any news uh, that nobody's uh, heard in the last three weeks. Uh, again, we have ge- geopolitical concerns. Uh, we have an election. We have no idea uh, who the president of the United States will be. It's not really a conversation that I'm willing to start uh, on YouTube. And the most important part is stay in your lane. If you're a trader, be a trader. If you're an investor, don't pick bottoms, guys. I've been, I've been saying this for years. If you love a stock, right? Just love a stock. Let's just say you love Amazon. And I use Amazon. My wife uses Amazon. Everybody's wife uses Amazon. Everybody uses Amazon, right? Let's say you think the stock is going to be at $200 in the next five years, right? It's not really crazy, okay? The one thing that they can't do, right? There's no possible way it could get to 200, okay, if it doesn't reclaim the 50-day moving average. That's that's a fact, right? That's a fact. Uh, and, that's, and there's no guarantee your stock, and it probably will, you know, I'm not being silly or anything, Amazon probably in the next five years will be higher, right? Apple in the next five years will be higher, and video in the next five years will be higher. But again, like I've been saying, your job is not to predict where you are in the next five years. You know, you, you get hit by, you know, you could be hit hit by a poodle, Right? You walk outside, a poodle hits you, you know, that it's in the end of the road for you. So you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But the most important part is if you are a long-term investor, you got to wait for stocks to get back above the 50-day. Now, again, if stocks get cheaper and you're okay with that and you believe in averaging costs down, that's one thing, right? That's absolutely one thing. But if you're a trader and you have a short-term bias and you're in this for a shorter time frame, then yes, you have to, your stock needs to get above the 50-day moving average for all the sell uh, for all the sell signals to kind of go away and reclaim the footing. So again, tomorrow's another day. Um, again, let's watch the semis tomorrow. Uh, they start losing today's ranges. Uh, they can get hit. Tesla looks like hot garbage. Uh, Tesla looks like hot garbage. It's literally, if it loses this bottom channel here, guys, right? If it loses uh, this 100-day SMA, uh, again, maybe it doesn't get to this 182 level that it, that it tested on Friday, on Monday, but it's going to start going lower. Uh, NVIDIA, you know, this is, guys, this is the lowest close, literally, in this whole formation. This whole formation, this is the lowest close. This thing starts losing today's channel. Again, there's a shot it gets to 95, 96, uh, and ultimately uh, back to that 93 level. Guys, that's it. I got to cut it a little bit short. Got to take my kids to uh, basketball training. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Just a reminder, tomorrow's Thursday, my normal day off, so there is no video. If you are uh, curious about pivots and trading both sides of the market and trading rejections and buy- and all that cute, cute stuff uh, you hear us continuously talk about. Again, all it takes is 30 days, kick the tires, and you'll quickly see if this is something that you are interested in. Guys, have a great night. God bless. I will see you soon.